fractals of five man in game content in Guild Wars 2. The concept so good that World of Warcraft took it and made it into Mythic Plus. The idea is quite simple. You got four tiers of fractals, and each tier brings something new to the table with scaling difficulty and good rewards. Let's have a look at why it's just so damn good. Now, why even do fractals? First off, legendary backpack. You'll notice that Guild Wars 2 is divided into three major sections. PvE, with raiding, fractals, and landscape, PvP, and World v. World. Each one has their own unique legendary armor system, as well as some legendaries you can get through them. But for PvE, the only legendary backpack is through fractals. You can't get any through raiding. So the three legendary backpacks are fractals, PvP, and World v. World. This is the legendary backpack from Fractals. You can talk to the NPC to start the collection as soon as you enter Fractals. Not only is the legendary backpack a really good reason to do Fractals, but secondly, the high, tremendously high amount of liquid gold you can get from Fractals makes it very appealing, especially on higher tiers. At the end of every single Fractal in the last chest, you will get Fractal encryption boxes. These can be opened with keys. The key will also drop at the end of the fractal. However, you can buy discounted keys per day. 30 per day. You can buy for 6 gold. These will crack the encryption box and allow you to open them. The loot inside makes it well worth it. Let's have a quick look at what it could be. From the wiki, we can have a look here that an open encryption box has a chance to drop quite a few things. First of all, agony infusions which will be helpful to help you try get more resistance and therefore do higher tier of fractals. We'll get into this in a bit. As well, there's a few other things. More keys possibly, a few other little items, some trophies and the like. But however, the most important are these over here. Over here we can see the average profit made for about 40 silver. There's also some extra achievements to help you. The Adept, Expert, Initiate and Master Fractal Fighter. What this allows you to do, in this case, if I do six unique fractals, I'll get myself a nice fighter's cash and as well two gold, making it even just better liquid gold. Another reason to do fractals is Mystic Clovers. If you are keen on making legendary items, getting your 10 Mystic Clovers a week can be fairly decent. Yes, it does use up a lot of fractal relics, but it is a good source of getting Mystic Clovers if you are interested in this as well as Ascended Salvage tools. So to recap, the reasons to do Fractals is an amazing legendary backpack that's quite easy to get, high amounts of liquid gold, as well as extra trophies, materials, yellows, greens, and blues, and also the chance for black line items. Now what are Fractals? Fractals are five man end game content with four tiers, 25 Fractal in each single tier. You might notice some overlap, for example, 1 Volcanic and 19 Volcanic. Every now and then, especially in the later tiers, you'll notice that they'll have different instabilities. We'll get into those in a bit. You'll notice that every tier has their dailies. They're the same daily, just on different tiers. And the good side about this is if you do dailies, for example, in tier 4, you do Underground Facility, you will get not just the tier 4 chest, but the tier 3, 2 and 1 chest on top, making it very good scaling rewards. Therefore, the idea is to try get towards tier 4 and do your dailies every day to try get 4 chests per daily, making a very quick goal. Also, do note the recommended fractal. These change and they're only available on tier 1, 2 and 3. They're different from the normal daily fractals, it can be important to try do your daily recommended fractals, especially at the beginning of your journey, as they do provide some good rewards, as well as give you more fractal encryption boxes just by doing them. Sometimes in tier 4 groups, you'll also find that they do their dailies and then wrecks afterwards. Also, another thing to take note is that the last three fractals are always Nightmare, Shattered Observatory and Sanqua Peak, those orders. Those are the only three at endgame to be challenge mode fractals. You will see sometimes in some of the other fractals a challenge mode symbol. This isn't for challenge mode dailies, but it is for some achievements and collectibles. Let's look at the basics now. 
you'll notice that on T1, there is no instabilities. They're just the fractals. Eventually, you start to notice between 19 to 20 that we're starting to require agony. You can see it at the top right of the icon. This scales up, so every fractal will require more agony. Agony is the system that fractals use to try and gate people and slow them down so that you don't have people rush into T4 too quickly. This does require you to start getting ascended pieces. You can only slot agony in ascended or legendary pieces. There are one or two pieces of exotic armor, special pieces that do have agony slots, but they're not easy to get. You'll notice that as you go into tier two, there will be one instability. You can see there it says mislock instability. In this case, there is a flux bomb. In this case, we have social awkwardness. In tier three, you can see now that there are two instabilities and you can guess that in T4, there are three instabilities. These can combo and make certain fractals very tough to do. So in some cases, you might have to pick easier fractals or harder fractals because the instability might be tougher. Let's take, for example, Snowblind in this case. Snowblind has social organist, flaxbox, and hamstring, where the easier Snowblind has sugar rush, last laugh, and vengeance. Sometimes your group comp might favor one of these over the other. Obviously, you are going to get more fractal relics out of a harder fractal, but you'll have to decide which one's going to be the quickest and easiest for your group to do. Sometimes going higher might actually be quicker than taking the lower one, as some of the instabilities stack and make the fractal pretty tough to do. Let's have a look at Agony Resistance. Agony Resistance is a score that will protect you against Agony Damage in Fractals. Agony Resistance is needed, especially going into Tier 2, 3, and 4 Fractals. Technically, you only need 150 Agony Resistance to be able to do the hardest Tier 4 Fractal, but the higher the Agony Resistance, the better your chance of survival, damage output, and boons will be. We'll have a look why in a bit, but for now, know that higher Agony Resistance is a better time. Now, what's stopping you from jumping straight into tier 4 fractals? First of all, Agony Resistance. Agony Resistance is the concept that Guild Wars 2 uses to slow down progression from tier 1 to tier 4. Agony can be fairly easy to get by, especially if you have full ascended armor, and can be bought out of the auction house, or is in some infusions that even drop out of landscape. This slows down people to try get them to not rush from tier 1 to tier 4. Agony also makes the fights a little bit harder, and therefore you do require decent agony resistance to do them. Generally, you should aim for the highest agony resistance of Sanqua Peak on whichever tier you're doing. So for example, in tier 2, you should get 61 agony resistance to do your T2 fractals. And when you get to T3, you aim for 106, and at tier 4, you aim for 150. Also, the different tiers. Your personal fractal level will start at 1, Every single time you do that, your fractal level or one higher, your fractal level will increase by one. So if your personal fractal level is three and you do Swamplands on 17, you won't move to 17, you'll move to four. So you'll go up one every single time you do either your level or one above it. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you can start to see tier two fractals. Then you'll work your way through tier two and then into three and then eventually into four. Generally, you'll only be able to do fractals and launch fractals at your fractal level. Although, most of the time in a group, you'll find a group where someone has the ability to click and select the fractal that you want to do. For example, if I can only see up to fractal level 6 and someone can see 16, they can launch Twilight Oasis and I will be able to do it with them. Now, by doing your fractals, tier 1 and plus, you'll be bombarded by so many plus one agony infusions. These agony infusions can be combined to get better agony infusions. So if I take four plus ones and I pay four silver, I can get the plus three. Although you should aim for plus nine agony infusions at a minimum. Plus nine is considered generally the meta because when you have all your slots, you will get to 62 agony resistance. Although sometimes it is tough to get your second agony infusion slot in a backpiece 
or maybe you struggle to get a third slot in a ring. This means that even with one shy, you'll be at 151, which is enough Agni resistance to do Sanqua Peak on tier 4. So my general recommendation is only buy plus 9s early game, and if you really want to have an easier time doing fractals, you can aim for higher. You can obviously get ones that are stronger than plus 11. By using Artificer, you can combine two plus 11s to go into a plus 12 and so on and so forth and get high amounts of agony infusions. If you don't want to go about it this way, you can always go into the auction house and have a look for some agony infusions from there. Any of these ones that have interesting status effects will also provide a 5 of a stat and agony resistance. This can be fairly good for some builds. A lot of builds do need high condition damage output or power output and getting some of these infusions might work out cheaper although might have some interesting effects on your cosmetic. Also further down the line when you do find that you have got quite a few fractal matrices you can take 3 plus 9s and 20 matrices to combine to get a plus 5 plus 9 agony infusion. This is sort of the meta for raiding fractal hybrid bolts as you get the extra stats that you want for raiding landscape and even world v world and you keep the agony resistance which means you don't need to swap out for raiding also from the vendor that sells the agony infusion take note of two items in particular agonized essence this can be used to add an extra slot onto a ring it's a fairly good idea to do to help you get higher agony infusions Generally, it's easy to add one slot to a ring, but tough to add a second as you need some of these items. They do drop from Dune Fractals in general, but they are fairly tough to get just generally. Also, an infusion extractor device. This allows you to remove any infusion. So if you have plus 9 and you want to swap it out, or an early game you put in a plus 3 by accident or something like this, you can always just pull it out. Also note that there are 18 infusion slots that you can possibly get meaning you can get 90 extra stats if you use the plus 9 plus 5s. You have obviously 6 in your armor, 2 in your weapon, 2 in your back piece, 1 in each accessory and 3 in each ring. You can add an extra slot to a back piece, an ascended back piece, and you can add 2 slots to a ring, although it is much easier if you use a ring that already has 2 slots. Let's have a look at team comp. Generally, for most pug team comps, you're going to have probably a heal brand, although other healers can do the trick, or even no heal at all. But generally, the heal brand or some other source of quickness is very required. If you do run a zero heal brand build, make sure that might is covered from some other source, as well as obviously quickness. You'll have some sort of alacrity, probably a DPS alacrity source, especially on T4 and CMs. Then we'll have three DPS slots. Generally power is preferred, especially on challenge mode 99 and 98. Most fights you want to try burst down as quickly as possible. Generally in fractals as well, high CC is valued. Because there are so many CC bars and CC phases in fractals, most builds will run the impact sigil to try capitalize on all that extra DPS from CC phases. Challenge Mode 100 does seem to favor condition builds. As well, the CC is not as important in terms of trying to get them at the right time. Obviously, timing CC is big, but if you are in a more advanced group, you won't have to worry too much. Now let's have a look at one of the most important parts of preparing for fractals. Your Fractal Attunement Mastery. The first mastery follows advice and locks your tier 2 fractals. This allows you to get into tier 2 fractals as well as gives you access to vendors. The second mastery, Agony Channeler, allows you to get extra rewards from the final chest in the dungeon, as well as being able to buy the ingredients needed to attune rings, i.e. being able to get extra agony resistance, as well as getting percentage of your mist potions as extra stats or tributes. This is very, very important. The third mastery, Recursive Resourcing, allows you to gain extra resources from the final boss chest 
as well as from your fractal encryption boxes. Also, allowing misposition conversion to be improved, which means you get extra attributes from your misposition. Basically, the reason why this is just so good is because you get extra rewards from the fractal encryption box. In fact, even if you've been doing your T1s and your T2s, do not open your fractal encryption boxes until you have this mastery. Then open them to make sure that you're getting more gold. The final mastery, Mistlock Singularities, allows you to use the singularities inside of fractals. These are the blue devices on the floor that allow you to basically get a buff that will shield you from instant death, give you extra agony resistance, as well as refresh your skills. These are so important when used to boon stack. Your quickness and your alacrity provider will usually use most of the skills to give boons, then take the singularity so that during the start of the fight, all these skills are off cooldown, allowing them to burst with DPS before needing to stack boons again. As well, your fractal potion conversion has been improved. This is so important, especially heading into T4s, as you definitely need every single bit of extra bonus attributes you can get. Let's have a look at the Fractal Consumable Vendor before we go any further. Discounted Tears of Alba. What these allow you to do is get some extra Agony Resistance. Obviously with Masteries, we get more Agony Resistance. This can be needed, especially early game, when you're trying to get enough Agony Resistance to do harder content. Sometimes you might not have the slots, and using these will just boost your Agony Resistance. What's nice is they do last through death, obviously, for one hour. And this allows you to be able to do all your fractals generally with it. Also, if you are doing CMs for the first time and you just want a bit of extra survivability and extra stats, using this can give you that extra bit of stats. Even if you are overcapped, still very good item to use. So let's have a look at the mist potions. First of all, you'll notice that you have a normal one and a large one. If you click on the little one, you'll see that it's only one stack. If you click on the large one, you'll notice that it's five stacks. So basically what this means is that per stack, you will get outgoing damage. So if you do use the Mist Offensive Potion, you'll get 3%. And if you use the five stacks, you'll get 15%. My general recommendation with this is when you get to Tier 3 Fractals, use the single-use charge ones. And when you get to T4, start using the large ones. If you do struggle on tier 3, or you're on one of those weeks where there's just some really bad instabilities, do use the large ones and just carry on going. Don't worry, you will make enough fractal relics to make it well worth it at the end. Generally, what you are going to want is you are going to want to get, obviously, large on all three of them towards tier 4, because you want the extra outgoing damage, i.e. you can burst things down. It's extra power and condition damage separately on the same item which means that it's just going to be overall damage either way you'll notice down in the white text at the bottom that it does also convert a portion of your agony resistance into vitality 150 percent of your agony resistance so if your agony resistance is 150 which is what you need to do the hardest fractal you will get 225 extra vitality pushing up your health so generally my hp is around 17k and with this potion active which i have activated i'm over 20k as you can notice it's quite a decent jump but notice that also at this point i have a lot more agony resistance than 150 so you might not gain as much as that so that's why I say the higher the agony resistance, the better. The potion of mobility allows you to move quicker. This is actually quite important in fractals to be able to move in and out of mechanics, stack quickly and also move around. As you'll notice, especially in CM99, there is also gravity at play, which can affect your movement speed substantially. The portion converts into concentration. So remember, this is very good for boon users. Generally, it's also good for DPS to use this potion, but it's most important for your supports, your quick and your alacrity support, to use this potion. The large mist defensive potion is increased or decreased incoming damage. So what this does is it means that you take less damage. So again, if you are struggling in tier 3, do use the potion. Just allow you to survive and carry harder. 
But in tier 4, it's almost a necessity to survive some of the mechanics. This potion can mean basically almost instantly dying or surviving long enough to have a good time. Also, the agony resistance portion goes towards toughness, which again increases our damage resistance. So this potion allows you not only to basically have less incoming damage, but also through toughness, have almost even more resistance to incoming damage. For more on this build and others just like it, catch me streaming on Twitch, stop by any time and hang out. If you found this helpful, please subscribe and share with some friends, it will really help grow the channel.